information. This is another example of the government pushing disinformation and misinformation of mainstream media organizations backing that and then big tech operations such as Mark Zuckerberg's that lean a specific one way. In a stunning turn of events, the House Judiciary Committee just posted on X that Mark Zuckerberg just admitted the following three things. Number one, the Biden-Harris administration pressured Facebook to censor Americans. Number two, the fact that Facebook censored Americans. Number three, Facebook throttled the Hunter Biden laptop story. This is a big win for free speech. In a Monday evening letter to House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg admitted that senior Biden admin officials repeatedly pressured Facebook teams to suppress information related to COVID-19 and the Hunter Biden laptop story that the platform would not have censored otherwise. Now, I have that letter right here and a few things stand out to me that I wanted to talk about today. So Mark starts off his letter to Chairman Jordan saying that he appreciated the committee's interest in his content moderation on online platforms. Now, as we know, Jim Jordan and his committee has been investigating a variety of different social media platforms, especially Facebook, given the way that people have perceived their interfering with the elections in the past. In his letter, he claims we're about promoting speech. Now I'm wondering specifically what speech Zuckerberg is is relating to because we do know the way the algorithms work that it's not always elevating the same speech. Zuckerberg goes on to say that the White House repeatedly pressured his teams for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire. And he expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. Now Zuckerberg goes on to say that ultimately it was our decision whether or not to take down the content and we own our decision. So that's great that he's taking some type of responsibility. He says, I believe the government pressure was wrong and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. So basically, he's admitting that it's wrong. You and I know that it's wrong. The government knows that it's wrong, but they're going to continue to do it. And they're going to say things like, we have to make sure that there's not disinformation and misinformation. Well, who are the biggest purveyors of disinformation and misinformation? I certainly don't think that it's the average guy that's doing that. I certainly think that there's major players involved in that, like mainstream media organizations that push the Russian collusion narrative. Because Mark Zuckerberg goes on to say, in a separate situation, and this is in the same letter, the FBI warned us about a potential Russian disinformation operation about the Biden family and Burisma in the lead up to 2020 election. Now, we know that that is completely false. That had nothing to do with Russia. It had nothing to do with any other information. This is another example of the government pushing disinformation and misinformation of mainstream media organizations backing that and then big tech operations such as Mark Zuckerberg's that lean a specific one way, them coming and backing that up and essentially using the power of their algorithms and their technology to be able to further that particular message while making it appear that they're neutral. So he goes on to say, of course, as we all know, it's since been made clear that the reporting was not Russian disinformation. And in retrospect, we shouldn't have demoted the story. Now, Mark Zuckerberg claims we've changed our policies and processes to make sure this doesn't happen again. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys believe that? Go to the questions area and let me know if you believe that. Then in the last paragraph of the letter, he says, I want to address the contributions I made during the last presidential cycle to support electoral infrastructure. Now, do you guys remember the Zuckerbucks? In the last electoral cycle, Mark Zuckerberg spent, I think it was around 400 million, which was essentially him claiming that he was helping to make sure local election jurisdictions across the country had the resources they needed to help people vote safely during a global pandemic. So, you know, if people can't show up in person to vote, then, you know, giving $400 million it helps somehow. And what could $400 million possibly do? Did we have to pay for our mail-in ballots? I personally requested a mail-in ballot and voted through the mail. I didn't have to pay anything for it. Did you have to pay anything for it? I wonder, where did this 400 million go? Uh, what, I'd like to know. But anyway, at so the end of the letter, the very last line, he says, so I don't plan on making a similar contribution this cycle. Well, is this him saying, please don't come after me. I'm not going to do it again. It wasn't my fault. It was the Biden administration's fault. Is that what he's telling us? We all know that it's already illegal to call fire in a crowded theater. It's illegal to call for violence against another individual. In terms of free speech, it is already illegal to do things that are wrong in that context towards others. So to be able to freely speak to say that there's a Hunter Biden laptop story, to suppress that and then to say, oh, we have to suppress it because of disinformation and misinformation. No, it's obviously these guys are censors. They're authoritarians and they're censors. Is it okay to censor? Is there things that we have to censor because it is so evil and it's so bad that we can't just openly talk 
talk about things? Or is it that sometimes these people's position is so weak, it can't withstand debate? Now, many people are asking, why didn't Mark come out right away and tell people about this pressure that was being put on him? A lot of people really see this letter from Mark Zuckerberg as him getting ahead of the political winds changing. He doesn't want to be at the butt end of the DOJ, kind of like Trump, uh, come the next election. Do you think that this was okay? Or do you think that the House committee that's investigating Mark should continue the investigation? And should they continue it with other companies? There's many other companies that we know also suppressed the Hunter Biden laptop story and lots of information about COVID-19, such as certain cures that were available and they suppressed it all, saying that it was misinformation and disinformation. And yet, increasingly coming out, peer-reviewed studies are showing that, no, that was not misinformation or disinformation. So this does tie into business in that people don't have the same trust that they used to have in these platforms. So it drives the cost up higher and higher and higher. And as that happens, the other medias, such as Rumble, Truth Social, X, those platforms are experiencing an explosion in their advertising and in their revenue. And the people that are coming there generally are are trusting the platforms more, which leads them to trust the advertisers more. So as a business owner, it's important that we hold these advertising platforms to account so that they're fair and even for everybody. But are you guys excited or happy that Mark Zuckerberg sent this letter, that he's telling us that they were doing what we already knew? And now Mark has come out and just said, yeah, one of the largest companies in the world, this is what we're doing. We were told to do it by the government. Oh, maybe Mark Zuckerberg will be the new bad guy. Maybe he'll be the new orange man. You never know. The question is, do you guys think that there's really any accountability going on here with Mark? Is he coming out and really taking accountability and saying that he's going to dive into this in his company and stop this from happening? We know when Elon took over X that there was 80 FBI agents embedded into X that were part of the censorship regime. They were FBI agents on the FBI payroll with desks in tw Twitter at the time, and they were censoring. How much of that exists in Facebook? We want Mark to come out and tell us about all of it. Don't just tell us enough that you think it's going to keep your hide out of jail because Trump's getting in office. We want to know the real truth. What else has been happening? What? Because there, it seems like there's a lot more than just stuff about COVID-19 and the Hunter Biden laptop story. There's so many other things that have happened where the fact checkers just got it wrong. Then the White House responded. <laughs> this is what they responded with. They said, our position has been clear and consistent. We believe tech companies and other private actors should take into account the effects of their actions that they have on the American people while making independent choices about the information that they present. Well, now that they said that, it totally clears it up. It's completely okay to censor information about COVID-19. It's completely okay to censor information about the Hunter Biden laptop story so that you can get reelected. I mean, if I had known that from the beginning, I would have just been totally all okay with the censorship. Thank you, Biden, for clarifying your position. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Are we going to have free speech back? Are they going to just keep attacking Elon over being the biggest provider of free speech? Or are the other platforms like Facebook going to also come back to their American values and allow free speech? As small business owners, we need to be engaged with our communities. And I'm sure everyone is, is very engaged with the political process, especially over the last couple of years. But now is a time that it's really important to dissect and to understand policies. And I think that that's what's really coming front and center in this election cycle, where we're at right now, where we, where we have really a, a, a solid set of policies being brought forth by the Republicans. And on the other side, we, we don't see much policy being given. I mean, we're told that we're going to get a stacked Supreme Court. We're told that the border's got to stay open, but now, now Kamala's saying she's going to build a border wall. We're hearing from the Democrats that everyone's got to pay their fair share, except Kamala's now going to copy Trump's no tax on tips. So if any of this resonated with you in any way, come to the questions area and help educate the viewers of our channel and me. This is very important and exciting information, and I kind of want to hear everybody's feedback about it. So thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you on our next video.